Bethesda has no soul. Anyway, moving on. So have you been playing anything that's been kind of lighting your fire and making you excited to, to come into the studio and get to work? I mean, it sounds weird, but like I'm enjoying playing Shattered Space. I obviously- <laughs> No, Todd, that doesn't sound weird at all. I mean, who wouldn't want to- That sounds like an obvious lot. Play Shattered Space, especially since Starfield is actually good now. It's more immersive than it's ever been. Wake up, wake up. <laughs> they polished out all the jank. Is something amiss? <laughs> <laughs> and the game runs like a dream. Oh my god. <laughs> I think when it comes to world... Hey, when I played Starfield for a whopping four hours be before unequivocally calling it a pile of dog dung, I at least didn't crash. Building, it's having that believability that this exists. And with games, it's, it's putting you in that world and having it react to you. <laughs> having it pique your curiosity. What? Why did she do that? When you have this curiosity for what's over that hill, that the game- Over the hill there's nothing, and over that nothing is another hill that piques your interest, and you're like, okay, okay, this was not the right hill. But the second one surely is gonna be the hill of dreams. And then you peek over that hill, and there's nothing! Maybe another hill if you're lucky. And by that third hill, there's nothing. And you understand that you bought nothing. And rewards it. There's nothing wow. up here. I don't think Bethesda are as concerned as they should be. I think that they think that everything's gonna eventually work out. That Starfield is gonna somehow maintain a slow and steady growth and eventually be redeemed like Fallout 76. Fallout 76 was not redeemed. Anyone thinking that Fallout 76 is even remotely a good game has either not played it or doesn't understand what's happening. People play their games for longer. The top 10 played games for 2023, the average age of those games was six years old. Wow. Um, Fallout 76 is now six years old. The only new game... <laughs> hey guys, we made a good game because now it's six years old and this other good game that we have nothing to do with and you haven't even played ours, that's also six years old. Coincidence? I think not game i think in that list was starfield i'm not so sure people are going to be playing starfield six years from now seeing as how less than one percent of their player base has even initiated the first quest step for the new expansion which is a shame those poor suckers are really missing out on oh wow that's even well actually wait is it as bad as i expected i expected six percent of people to return to shattered space considering the player numbers wow this is though impressive so from those 6%, the absolute vast majority of players literally just looked at it, installed it probably, and was like, Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm, I, you know what, I'm, I'm not even gonna give it a try. But on a lot of cool new content, like the new redeemed enemy type. It's a berserker variant that charges at you with the ferocity of a thousand suns. What I mean? At least it exists. Let's see what else is new. Recently, we've started implementing a sponsorship system into our games. You'll notice this with Factor. There's no way. There is no way. Which is the sponsor of the day. Factor has a lot of variety. They've got 35 meals to choose from. It has 16 times the... That... That was just an elaborate transition. Okay, got it. Now, before I could even start playing the expansion, I had to reacquaint myself with the game. And as I was doing that, I heard a familiar voice. Yes, we've all seen everything. <laughs> now put your clothes back on. Oh. <laughs> We're in public, you dumb whore. It's you. Some of you might remember in my last Starfield video, I spent hours tricking Sarah into marrying me, only to immediately abandon her on the very planet that she was stranded on for two years. And now- That's almost poetical. Now, after all that I've done to her, I struggle to look Sarah in the eye, because somehow, like the fool she is, she can still find it in her heart to love me. You're my soulmate. We were meant to be together. 
<laughs> so I thought marriage is not working out. No shit, she doesn't have a soul. I thought it would be best for us both if I were to end things right there on the spot. But I couldn't stand the idea of hurting her like that. My heart feels- My man, please. Something shining bright before you doesn't mean that there's nothing bright in the distance. Feels like it's been ripped out of my body. So, I changed my mind. You have no idea how relieved I am that you feel that way. And a few moments later- Do it again, do it again. I met Andresia. Oh now, I'm not gonna lie, considering Starfield has the rough equivalent of literally two female characters that instantaneously uh, should need, should not be thrown on the pyre for witchcraft, I guess this is as good as it gets. My goodness! Seeing her made me realize that if I'm playing an expansion, I want to do it with someone who makes me- Plus, she's mentally disabled. That's right, boys. She is from House Varun. And they, some magically how are humans that have absolutely no idea what society should be like, and thus they can't act in society properly because they don't follow any of the same rules that we do, even though it's not visible how that's true, but never mind the small details. To me expand as a person i want an experience that is fresh and new not old and blonde and you know what i want to share that experience with someone who has hands that aren't so freaky then it's over <laughs> now i'm going to need some time to myself <laughs> and so, as I was on my way to start playing the new content with my new girlfriend at my side, Ooh. somebody stopped me because they wanted to rec Oh, I thought that's Andrej for a moment that I- Wait, this isn't- it's, it's almost literally her. Recruit me into a faction. I'm from the Trackers Alliance. I had immediate doubts about this alliance since the gal they sent to fetch me couldn't even track me with both of her eyes. I was now being confronted with a puzzle, that being how to even find the new content and this vast galaxy of old content. Eventually, I resorted to looking up a guide. Grav jumped to any orbit not used specifically for another mission. You'll receive a distress call from a station called the Oracle and a mission called What Remains. Of course. Oh, maybe. That's why people can't find the expansion, because it's hidden so well. And no one would ever do something random in this game, because it's a waste of time. None of that worked for me. Classic IGN misinformation. However, the top comment, which took five seconds to read, proved to be far more helpful. But the fact that it isn't immediately apparent how to start playing the new expansion is emblematic of the shambles that this game is currently in. We dock our ship into a shattered space station where we find Ooh. some ghosts and shadow you, 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 you saw what he did there? Zero G. And I was really happy about this at first, because I remember complaining in my last video that I never got to encounter any zero G gun battles throughout my 35 hours of playtime. And within my first That's roughly 35 uh, hours more than you need to understand that Starfield is not worth the price tag gun battle i realized why because zero g combat really sucks your movement is severely hindered making battles <laughs> feel stiffer than usual and every time you shoot you get pushed backwards which makes perfect sense oh my god wait wait wait, wait. this can't be a complaint this is todd howard's realism we they, they wanted to make a realistic space thingamajig and there you go but it's also annoying. It's frustrating too because I could see a good game like Ultra Kill taking a zero gravity mechanic and using it to enhance the movement rather than hinder it. I must admit though that this entire space station did feel like it had a little bit more thought put into it than most other Starfield environments. Eh, well, it not a lot, just just a little bit. Environments with the weightless trash bags being a perfect metaphor for, well everything after some floating and killing we eventually come to a terminal that allows us to turn the gravity back on restoring gravity in three two one oh there you go <laughs> yeah what the hell going? is something amiss <laughs> and then some phantom guy goes crazy and we kill him
from there, I say FML as we FTL to the moon of Kavnik 1, where the plot of the expansion truly begins. But the plot of, it, of, of the expansion literally just glitches in, huh? Now, I wouldn't dare waste your time telling you the plot of the expansion as the developers themselves explain the story of Shattered Space far better than the actual game does. Now, you see, this is what we call in the industry blatant lies. There is no anything in Shattered Space. There is no story. Before the start of Shattered Space, a secret experiment involving grav drive technology went terribly wrong. By the way, the irony of them doing another grav drive technology experiment that goes wrong is a literal rehash of the grand reveal of the original Starfield game. Oh my god, we made grav drives and we ruined the earth. And there we go. There we go. Some emotionally stunted rejects of, uh, of humanity are literally doing the same thing. How original! Involving grav drive technology went terribly wrong. It resulted in a massive tear in the fabric of space time. Whoa! That's massive! Swallowed a significant portion of the Varun capital of Dazra. Yeah, so they don't have to make more of it, and the three great houses all magically survive. Don't worry about it. There's a massive crater in their city, nothing has been reconstructed, people are still. Wow! That is that is so Bethesda. Bla blame you not making the game on an in-game catastrophe. You know why this whole place has nothing in it? Well, there was a catastrophe. What kind? I don't know. Use your imagination. What are you, dumb? Still searching for missing loved ones. Ironically enough, this entire 15 seconds of video is more engaging than the actual game itself. Because when you got music, editing, and an overall sense of presentation, it can make any story so much more engaging. But within the actual game itself, we're still tethered to boring close- All of them have retarded tattoos because reasons. There's no reason for them to have tattoos. And Dreja doesn't have tattoos, by the way, but everyone in Var from Varun has a tattoo for some stupid reason and yet there's no reason for them to have tattoos bethesda just did it because it's mystique it's a um it's a thing don't worry about it jesus christ listening to what bethesda entailed to do with the lore and setting and everything in this game is almost the same as trying to understand fate lore and then the most logical thing is just don't worry about it. Difference is fate is awesome and Bethesda is trash. Close up shots of stiff NPCs rather than, you know, actual cutscenes. And so I seriously struggled to stay invested or even pay attention throughout the entire expansion. Oh my god! A great tide yeah. of energy emanated. I mean, it's tough when the NPCs talk slower than an elderly that just woke up. I don't know where the zealots are keeping, Sahima, but. <laughs> Hey, at least the lore is accurate that everyone from Varun is a mental a mental reject. Again, again, Varun is supposed to be a bunch of people who don't conduct things like normal people, so they, they don't understand concepts of being human and shit. I have a good idea who does. And when every line of dialogue is packed with exposition. My mind turns against me. I must return to engineering and make one last attempt to restore the power. I'm glad he says everything out loud that he's thinking, so I know what he's thinking. I'd say you probably spend about 75% of your time in conversation as well. It's painful. But before I could even start exploring this new planet, I was required to complete an ancient ritual, which would grant me access. Yes, because at the start of this magical game, the best game ever, may I add you bigot? You are obviously suspicious and sus as fuck because you're an outsider and Varun doesn't take kindly to those. You know, because reasons, I guess. Uh, but instantaneously, in roughly 30 seconds of meeting them, you become their messiah. So everything's pretty cheeky and peachy. Access into the house Varun. This is a <laughs> profound step for you. Do not worry. <laughs> you have nothing to fear. That's pretty much like the only amount of unique dialogue she has, by the way, for everything that's happening in her own home 
playing this thing or whatever. As I ventured down into the deep, dark, cavernous tunnels, I was met with my first task to blow out this candle. Damn. Next, I was optionally required to cast aside my burdens, which I did by throwing some old worthless notes I had into the flames. I could feel the great serpent's grip tighten around my neck as I made a leap of faith over a small gap. I could feel its venom in my veins as I stood in some really warm, knee-high water. I could feel the great serpent creeping into my soul as I sacrificed a kid groat. I lost control of my vision as the great serpent took me over. I convulsed two and Bruh, did you steal at least a vase or something? Bro, while I picked up two statues and then put those statues on another pedestal, completing the ritual. As I Beautiful. spoke to whoever this is, I realized that I had devoted the This is what you call uh ten reasons why abortion should be legal entirety of my essence and my body to the great serpent a body that now slowly shrank and eventually faded away dissolving into his supreme greatness what happened why did it teleport me so the entirety of this ritual is emblematic of shattered space's quest design which has you doing nothing more than mundane brainless activities like <laughs> grab a key card or talk to this person or blow out a candle which is incredibly soul crushing to play through it's completely acceptable this is bethesda that we're talking about every single person in bethesda who had even an ounce of self-respect or wasn't a liberal has already abandoned it long long ago So the big selling point for Shattered Space was that it wasn't procedurally generated like a lot of the base game was. We love Starfield's massive open galaxy, but from early on in our planning, we knew we wanted to introduce a more secluded and handcrafted location. That craftsmanship become- Yeah, and that failed. Really hot, by the way, okay? No one likes these handcrafted places. They're just bad. There's nothing to expect from them, and their storytelling is as bad as the- AI generated storytelling that's not even supposed to be storytelling. Comes abundantly evident once you've been given the reins to explore the new planet. Now we're finally able to appreciate the visuals and soak in both of the colors that Bethesda used. We're able to appreciate the wildlife, which is neither wild nor teeming with life. We're able to seek out locations that lack any interest whatsoever and beg to be ignored. But somehow, despite the artisanal <laughs> craftsmanship at hand, Shattered Fake to be ignored is a pretty good summary, honestly. Space manages to be worse than the base game, which is honestly quite an achievement. If I didn't know any better, I would think that this whole planet was procedurally generated because it's just as dull and lifeless as the rest of them. And visually, it looks so unappealing that I didn't want to spend time in it. I can't help- I mean, when you look at the planet these poor, poor inbred people are at, because they're probably inbred, let's be real. They're, they're so inbred, they're probably play, uh, all, all dressed up as sandwiches for Halloween, okay? And some of them never stop uh, pretending it's Halloween. At least that explains why they're socially inept and shit, because they, they live on the most depressing planet ever. And I honestly thought the original main city of the game, the first one that you go to, was dreary, depressing, and completely not worth existing in. But now, this, this is much worse. Help but feel as though that the hands that crafted this expansion were- Honestly, the fact that half of their city got blown up is probably the greatest thing that has ever happened to these inbreds. Missing a couple fingers, while those that remained were riddled with arthritis. But you know what? This video was handcrafted, and if you've enjoyed it so far, go ahead and give it a like. But only if you've actually liked it, because I would hate for you to have to lie to yourself. I mean, that's what Bethesda does, and... I have absolutely no problem if you lie to yourself in order to boost me. So thank you for everyone who likes the video. Your sacrifices will be probably remembered for less than five seconds after I finish the sentence. Thank you from the bottom of my... What are we talking about? Look where that got them. So now we're being tasked with bringing unity to House Varun by completing three separate quests.
None of these things matter, by the way. As nothing matters in this game in general. At least they're consistent in being trash. So some guy left his post, and now we gotta go find him. To find him, we ask this lady where he is. She tells us that another guy knows where he is. So oh, we go so find smart. that guy. A drink or two out of light in this mood. That guy then gives us a tracker, which we then use to track the other guy. This leads us to an abandoned camp, leading- Why does the tracker track the guy we're supposed to track? Mr. Surmise that that guy isn't here because this camp has been abandoned. Then why did the tracker track the camp so we follow his trail to go where here is for that guy and we end up meeting some people who saw that guy and helped him a few days ago we sent him north they even gave him two groats as a kind gesture oh hey look at that i think i see those two groats right over there then we find the guy that we came here to find and i convince him to come back to the original guy who sent me to find this guy hey. and they all lived happily ever after i'm going to stick around and help barrick out This one's pretty much just like well thankfully that explains the intricate complex web of of betrayal sabotage and inner politics of house varun and one of their three great houses and if it doesn't well i guess you're fucking stupid then because that clearly was way way more telling than anything anyone has ever done in the history of ever like it sounds we go to a place where hostages are being held then once we find those hostages we free them thank the servant i thought i was going for although it's hard to believe that these people were captured to begin with seeing as how stupid their captors are then we partake in hostage negotiations which whoa make... whoa whoa a little bit easier okay they did the best they could it's not their fault they're inbred for generations it, it just happens dear sweet andresia actually helped me out with that's it's history you speak truth. I have been. Wait, wait, wait! Show, show me that, that those lips, boys. Holy, those some d sucking lips right there, boys. Oof. History. You speak truth. I have been blinded by pride, but your words have guided me back to the path. You know what, though? Playing through this game kind of reminded me of being in high school, where you're forced to go to a place and. Oh. Sit down and listen to some old chick spouting exposition from a textbook. The quests that the teachers handed out were tedious, mundane, and granted very little experience. And all the girls had this dead look in their eye whenever I went near them. Things get serious here. As we go to a dam, then we drain the dam. Wow, that was so fun. I uh, activated the pump. We find there's ghosts protecting the dam. Now this is where we're able to to get a good sense of what it's like to fight oh no it's a haunted dam that makes everything different fight these new phantom enemy types and for the most part they really don't bring anything new to the table and okay no 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 you're completely wrong these new enemy types are amazing bethesda could have just copy pasted their completely garbage dumpster ai but instead of that they complete they copy paste their garbage dumpster ai but added the most annoying ability to any mob in any game ever. Okay, honestly, the most abil uh, annoying ability of any mob ever is when it hits you, it randomly removes an uh, equipped item. Chaos Elemental, anyone? But they added the second most annoying thing. Random teleportation to a location you have no idea about when they get shot. That's what Bethesda did. Like, there are so many ways to not completely fail this. But Bethesda decided to hold its own beer and then commit suicide. Great stuff. In fact, they make combat slightly more tedious because they can randomly teleport around the map, which does nothing more than elongate the fight. So why are we here? Ah, he does mention a smart cookie. Good question. We're here to retrieve a vortex interlock, of course. The vortex. What is a vortex interlock? Well, it's a vortex interlock interlock we grab allows us to use this big laser cannon to shoot a laser into the bubble wow Enough. shut it down Nothing power and that allows us to enter the scaled citadel Ooh. it looks like a dragon dildo by the way within the citadel we're given a choice 
This guy is planning on harnessing the power of the Vortex he's been sucked into to unleash a bunch of Vortex-powered super soldiers, aka the Blue Man Group, into the universe. You can choose to okay. side with him and awaken them, or kill all of them in their sleep. What have you done? You've killed them all! Oops. Well, not the first time I'm being a man of genocidal maniac. Honestly, probably not even close to the last time in one hour. And now we partake in a great big climactic combat. And it was here where I actually had a little bit of fun for once. I found this overpowered shotgun that could one-shot most of the enemies, and that felt really satisfying. <laughs> it also allowed me to make good use of the boost pack by hopping around the arena as an angel of death. It's kind of weird to think that if they had put some more work into the mobility mechanics that the combat in this game actually could have been kind of fun. I also found a case that required me to be an expert level digi picker to unlock, which I was. But I didn't want to go through the effort of unlocking it since I find the lock picking mechanic to be extremely boring. Luckily though, the gun was clipping outside of the case. And was shit, by the way. <laughs> this right here was my favorite moment in the entire expansion. Once we get to the top of the citadel, we unlock and destroy four power nodes. Which causes the entire building to collapse. So we run out of it and watch the entire building collapse. Wow. Why couldn't you just keep shooting the fucking laser at it, though? Then we wake up in a- Also, by the way, saving the universe or, you know, how autism is cool and all, but someone has to probably pay for the property damage and... Probably you, dude. Room with all the elite members of the House Varun. Yay! I cannot believe it. And oh, I thought that's a woman. Because, I mean, who fucking didn't? I cannot believe it. And here they. This must be a woman, right? She's clearly autistic, but so is everyone in this expansion. Give me a newcomer who's been here for. I mean, mentally divergent or something. Four hours, the response Okay, too too late to say the politically correct term. ...ability of forging the House Faroon's future. Then we let the Harbinger decide. I chose for them to start up a war or whatever. I don't really care since I'm never, <laughs> never gonna play this game again. And that decision naturally made everyone mad, including Sam Co. What? Who the fuck is Sam Co? Oh, right! Sam Co? Isn't he dead? I just... Oh, he's dead. Eh. Went to his funeral. Is reality divine? Existence itself. I mean, that was such a bad decision. He kind of felt it throughout the void, probably, obviously, right? Is a mystery which yearns to be uncovered. What is goodness but a. Don't have any other advice to add at the moment. And so there you have it. That's Shattered Space in a nutshell. It's a four hour expansion that took me five days to complete because every single second of it was pure pain, and it only cost me 30 bucks. Beautiful. Truly beautiful. To a certain extent, our own hubris caught up with us. You know, we had had so many, not just successes, but- Dude, the fact that you unironically refer to yourself in such a grandized way, aka, oh, our hubris up to us like you're some kind of fucking god or king or something like that that is that is quite the telling thing honestly literal game of the years like yeah. industry-wide accepted game of the years you know we started to talk ourselves into the fact of you know we were infallible now our buddy bruce here said all of this in regard yeah he Completely ignoring the Fallout 76 exists and everything. Hards to Fallout 76, but it's abundantly clear to me that they're still overflowing with hubris when it comes to Starfield. It's the only logical explanation because it's hard to believe that anyone over at Bethesda can think that this game is actually fun to play, but apparently they do. Recently, this guy right here, Emil Pagliarulo, did an in Oh no, no, not Emil again. Have we not suffered enough travesties? Hasn't enough damage have already been dealt? Why? 
Why must we be bestowed upon this man's absolute blight against humanity and made to suffer? Why? Emil, can you just not find a rope in a tree branch? Probably too fucking dumb to make a knot. Interview where he basically said as much. I think in a lot of ways, Starfield is the hardest thing Bethesda has ever done. We pushed ourselves to make something totally different. That we pulled it off makes Starfield something of a technical marvel. It's also in a lot of ways the best game we've ever made. So either he's completely delusional and believes what he's saying, or he... I mean, I believe 100% everyone at Bethesda is delusional. There's honestly not even... Not even a lot of questions about that one. Anyway, that's a 10 out of 10 banger. Uh, Ren's reviews. Yay! 10 out of 10. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.